day. Hope you're happy. And uh, welcome back to, or welcome, either one, uh, to the VIP Day Variety Show, where we get to spotlight our amazing, amazing done a day clients and graduates all around their VIP days, which is awesome for you because you get to see how people structure them, how people sell them, and how they've changed their life and their business, which it's so fun. Uh, and we do this every Tuesday. So again, if you're new here, it's Tuesdays at 1 Eastern, <laughs> uh, Facebook and YouTube. And again, we love to highlight different industries, different uh, styles of VIP days, etc. So that way you can see and be inspired by the other folks who have taken the leap into the VIP day revolution. So today's guest is awesome and super powerful when it comes to copywriting and messaging. And it's been so awesome to have her join us. She actually uh, was a guest expert in our program before she even joined our program. Uh, so I saw her brilliance uh, before she uh, she joined. But I'm really excited because she's done really well with VIP days and has even taken her first VIP day and created multiple VIP days um, that she saw as a great fit to continue to bring value to her clients, uh, which is really awesome. So Miss Sarah Fartinian, hello. Hi. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here chatting all things VIP day. <laughs> yes, me too, me too. So go, and t go ahead and tell the good people of the internet uh, a little bit about you and your business. Yeah, so I'm Sarah Vartanian. I am a launch and funnel strategist and copywriter. And I work with folks to gather data, research, and pair that all together to really uncover the words and make the people they love to serve most feel seen and heard. So they can, of course, make more sales and call in the right customers. That's what I do. And I do that through primarily VIP days. Um, and then I also have a larger signature package that people can book, but I sell a few of those um, on, on purpose <laughs> because that's what I love about VIP days, but I know we're going to get into that, but um, yeah, that's what I do. Yay. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, a fellow Canadian. So for those of you Canadians uh, yes. watching, yes, from Toronto. <laughs> Yes, you have a friend. Uh, so uh, let's dive into business before VIP days. Uh, how long have you been in business? And then um, kind of what were your services? Who were you helping? Give us a lay of the land. Yeah, so I have been in business in one way or the other for 10 years, but full time for seven. Um, and then yes, full time in copywriting for five. So we made the pivots along the way, all around content, but have landed in stayed um, steady in this copywriting space for the past five years and absolutely love um, the work I do here. So um, before VIP days, I was doing a bunch of different things as I think <laughs> often a lot of us do like dabbling and trying what's working and what's sticking. So I had, um, I still had the big package that I had now at a much different price. Um, and I had a few more things in it than I do now because I realized what people need and what they don't. Um, but the problem was that I can only deliver so many of those a year because they take a lot out of me. I'm actually doing like all of the little like launch planning, talking to their, um, the people on their team, things like that. So maybe I can do five, six a year realistically. That's what I've learned without burning myself out. Um, and so I needed something else to, you know, fill up my income because otherwise I was finding I kept hitting the certain revenue level and I just couldn't really get past it because it was a time issue. And if I got past it, it was at the risk of me absolutely exhausted. And you know, if you are in your online business world, you probably know launch season tends to be around like, you know, back to school season and I have two kids or like in January, February, which means me working over the winter holidays. And so whenever I would say yes, it would be always at the risk um, and, you know, at the detriment to any of my family time that I actually was looking forward to. Um, so that didn't really work well <laughs> and not that I didn't do it many, a couple times, many times over to learn that lesson, <laughs> but it wasn't really working for me. So what I did was I implemented like a half day VIP day. So I did, it was like originally about three and a half hours. Um, in the end it probably was four cause I did a little bit on the back end, of course, like with the notes following up. And in that time people could book me to do, I, I kind of had a list. I was like, you can book me to do, um, like three to four emails for your welcome sequence. We could optimize your sales page. We could map out your funnel. So I kind of had a list of the common things people asked me for and we would do that. But I found um, 
and so wait, I'll actually pull back. I started charging that at 750 for the three and a half hours. And then I started like pulling the time a little bit shorter. So I made it two and a half hours and I bumped it up to actually 997. And I found that was sort of a sweet spot. Um, and I sold moving in, I guess, 2019 to 2020, I sold around 40 of them in a year, like within a year period. Um, and I could have sold more, but I was like running out of time. I loved them though, because they were short and sweet. Um, and I could fill them in to wherever my calendar just kind of fit, right? Like the, the, in between these like bigger launch packages, I could fill them in. But then when the pandemic hit, that wasn't really working for me so well anymore because I've had, I have two boys. They were home for school. They needed help. My husband was also home. He has his own business. It felt like everybody was talking <laughs> around me. Um, and I am someone like, and, and maybe not all writers are like this, but as a writer, I definitely need quiet time to write. I can do a lot of other things with noise around. I can block it out, but I cannot write with talking. So I had to do something else. And I was, you know, been following you for a while, Jordan. I was thinking like, okay, maybe I can keep these VIP days that people like, but actually just make them um, maybe more impactful, actually finish a whole deliverable for someone and do fewer of them. Cause it'd be easier for me to negotiate with my family. Okay, like to my partner, you work with the boys in the basement, maybe on this day, like once a week, as opposed to like four or five times me freaking out. So that's sort of what I was doing before the VIP day period. Yeah, that totally makes sense. We saw a lot of people, <clears throat> and I think why we had so many students um, over the past two years is because of a lot of the virtual schooling, a lot of the everybody is here in my space. Yes. And <laughs> it's harder to, <clears throat> when you have monthly retainers and things, it's harder to negotiate with your partner, your husband, your wife, your spouse to like, I need like five hours a day. <laughs> that's, that's a harder <laughs> negotiation than I need like, Fridays every month or whatever the case is mm -hmm. or like your dedicated, you know, VIP day or, how, or whenever you do them. So I agree. They are a lot more negotiable when <laughs> time and, uh, and silence are very few. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I know it. And bless you. You have two kiddos. I, we have, we have, I have one and he, I don't know how multiple, like multiple children, parents during virtual schooling, I like literally could not even fathom what y'all were doing. <laughs> having one, I was like, time out. I'm out. Like I was not, it. it was, it was not done well. I will yes. say that. And I think I'm a former teacher. I spent 10 years teaching before um, going to business oh, yeah. elementary yeah. school. And my boys actually go to the school that I taught at. Um, mm. And so I think that it allowed me to have a little bit more flexibility and boundaries because I know in the end, like I know the inner workings of school and I know what they're actually gonna mark and look at and do. So it was a little easier for me to say, okay, focus on this. Don't worry about this. Yeah. We'll just do our best. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> We're all just doing our best every day. That's, uh, yeah. that's definitely all the we can do. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It really is. Especially when the standard when changes all the time. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I know, right? It's all over the place. So so I love that. And so then with you saying, okay, I want to create something that, again, I can negotiate with my partner and be available for for less than, you know, all these kind of two to three hour smaller half day VIP days. What was the, was there like a certain, like what pushed you over to edge to make that change? Was it just like the pandemic and virtual schooling? Was it there was clients that were wanting that bigger impact um, result from you? Kind of talk us through that exactly. Yeah, that's period. such a great question. So I found when I looked back at all those like 40 half day sessions I had sold, many of them were people who would come back and bought more than one because they'd come and they'd get in a call with me and they'd say, okay, I want to do all these things. And, you know, what can we do in the, in the realistically? And I'm like, well, I think you would need like three days. We could do th that over three days, for example. Um, or you could book the larger package. And I kind of had this middle package I had been playing with. I called it like an intensive where it was just a sales page and just the sales emails, um, as opposed to like all the other stuff around that. Um, and I sold a couple of those. So, and that had sort of made me interested a little bit and also like, okay, people are interested in something a little more. Um, but the the half days weren't really serving enough. Like I found more people wanted an end result um, and they'd book more sessions, which in the end added up to be 
the same price as a VIP day, basically, right? Or they'd come back because they really enjoyed the experience and they'd be like, I love these three emails. Could you do another, like, could you add on to this sequence for me? Could we do this together? So uh, that made me think about doing that. And then I started focusing on trying to just offer, as opposed to a sort of a bunch of things for these strategy sessions, I went all in on sales page optimization. Because in the end, a lot of people were coming to me for the sales pages and I love doing sales pages. And the truth is, the more you do something, the better you get at it, the faster you get at it. And I and I had like some beautiful templates and I had a whole list for myself. I had created like a bunch of sort of plug and play headlines that just would help inspire me so that I could move quickly. And I started developing these resources um, as we all do in our business. And I know as copywriters, we'll develop sort of our own tarot from. So I'm not staring at that like blinking cursor, right? That <laughs> throws us all off. Um, and so I had moved into this sales page optimization that was working really well. I developed this beautiful template. Um, so basically I'd ask people questions, fill it all in. It was for every section of the sales page and it would allow me to write it really quickly. Um, but I still wasn't giving them like the full sales page. I was giving them a solid draft, um, of certain sections. And then I would leave out like parts out like testimonials, let's say, or like things that they could easily fill in for themselves. I was focused on like the main sections. Um, but a lot of folks were like, oh, I just love what you did because I actually just hire you to do the rest. Um, so that was a lot of the inspiration for wanting to go further into VIP days. And then I had been, like I said, I've been following you for a while. Um, I had been a guest, you invited me in to be a guest expert. And then you had, I think it was the secret showcase like a year ago, July or something. It was like you were having it. And I thought that was sounded really fun and it sounded like a great way to come in. I was like, I want to know these secrets and I want to meet a bunch of people. And I wasn't in anything at the time. Like I felt like I needed, like I was kind of looking for a community. I know that you surround yourself with great people. I can see the, like the people who come through your programs. And so I felt like now was the time to go in there and really like solidify and clarify my offer. And I knew that you would have suggestions that would just make it better. Um, and I knew that you'd have a great community. So I wanted to, um, I decided to take the leap into really going all in on it. Yeah, for sure. Which I love. And <laughs> so glad you're part of the community. And so with that being said, then, um, obviously because you had done ones similarly and you came into the program with a lot of experience and knowledge, then what was your process of, okay, I know that I'm going to go all in on the sales page, or did you come into the program already knowing that you wanted to do just sales pages because of your experience? Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure, actually. I brought it to, um, we're allowed to submit things as part of the program. So I think in the, I think it's in the first section where you could submit sort of your idea of what you want to do. And I said, should I like go in on sales pages? And I gave a bit of the background um, or should I offer like a launch copy day, which would have like, let's say three or four choices um, that you could do. And the feedback I got, I, think, I believe from you and from the team was around like going, like try to focus on the one for now. So make, so that people don't have to make decisions essentially, like get rid of the decision-making um, for them. So I decided to go with that. Um, and, and that was sort of how I had been feeling anyways, but it was a bit of like a gut check and a reassurance for me that was nice to have an outside perspective. Um, so that's where I went. And then what I didn't have in place was, although I had a process I followed every single time, I hadn't like named and claimed it basically. Yeah. Right. And I realized I talked to people about it on the sale on, on like the sales call, but I didn't actually talk about it anywhere else. Mm. Um, and so that was a big differentiator because I mean, as a copywriter, I know I'm always asking my clients, like, tell me your framework. Let's put that on your sales page. But I wasn't doing it myself. <laughs> I, think, I think we can all be guilty of that. For, like, yes. Not taking our own medicine. <laughs> yes. um, so that was really lovely, like work to work through that um, as well as through uh, working on the, like in the program, I got all of my resources and my assets actually together and I had them, but they were sort of all over the place. As I mentioned, I did have a beautiful sales page workbook, but there were some other aspects like I had um, my assistant design like a sales page wireframe 
um, we actually house it on like a secret link. So when people say like, here's your sales page and here's a sample of what you might design it like, um, yeah. just kind of following the core sections of a regular sales page, because people are always asking like, okay, so like now how do I like put this together? <laughs> right? like, um, and, I, and then I, we also put like a beautiful list of referrals together um, based on a lot of the people in their program people are asking for, we got together um, mock-ups and visuals and through Canva, because again, I'm always nice. saying like, you need these mock-ups and visuals. So they had that. We did a video around like how to do the scrolling gifts and things like that. Oh, so we put together a bunch of assets. And then when like my VA actually created like a folder for me that houses them all, it says start here. So every time I had a new client, I would literally copy it over and would be there. Um, and then we also, clarified our whole process through Dubsado, like the onboarding process. Yep. We made an onboarding guide, an offboarding guide. I set up um, testimonial requests via video ask, yep. um, which has been really lovely. And um, all those things were put together. And although I, again, I'd had them, they weren't as systemized and they weren't actually all linked. So it took me a lot more time to do them. Um, and so I hadn't, I don't think I'd ever spent so much time getting things prepared behind the scenes, but once I did, I was like, I am like a real grown up business owner here. <laughs> um, and it, really, yeah, it really does. And it inspired me though, to go through the other aspects. So now like for my signature offer, we've done the same thing. Like everything's really ready. And I actually tied yeah. it up so many systems. It was really inspiring, um, yeah. from that. And you have such great resources in there around like what you need to do in Dubsado and how you can start using Airtable and things like that. Um, yeah, in the yeah. program. So that's, that's where yeah. I really, the changes I found were made. Awesome. So for your target client, it seems like it was the same target client, uh, from the small ones for the large ones. Or yeah. what, did you have to make any tweaks to your audience as well or your client? Um, I, I don't really find my audience has changed so much um, yeah. at all. I think a couple of them, you know, have not, like they've come back and inquired if I still have that other offer and I don't. So some of them chose not to work with me. Some of them have still come on board with it anyways. Um, and then, um, I mean, once a year I do a little secret summer sidekick where I do, a, I throw back, I throw a couple of those sessions out there. Um, it's just my fun way doing something for like past clients um mm -hmm. and a nice way to fill my summer without taking other things so i always like, contact them at that point <laughs> a few yes. of those ones um but mostly my audience is still the same it's like coaches service providers course creators um consultants it really ranges okay um, yeah. No, yeah i figured it since it was again just a little bit longer of an engagement from before and plus mm -hmm. people were wanting multiple so i felt like i was like okay yeah she's probably the same the same client which is nice yeah. Um, and whatnot. So you don't have to do too, too much work from that end. Um, mm -hmm. Talk to me about the marketing and sales aspect. So how you marketed and sold your 40 smaller bite um, half days and then your VIP days, was it different? Was it the same? Like what have you adjusted from a marketing and sales aspect? I think um, when I was doing those half days, I was part of a couple of like paid Facebook communities, like the networking cool. communities where I was able to share about them. And they were pretty easy to sell because of the price point, I believe. Like yeah. you know, people were like, okay, I want this. I can come in and work with you. And they like it. And then I tended to get referrals because they had a good experience. Yeah. Um, in terms of the sales page, I announced it to my email list. I did a little campaign on social media, like for over a week where I really talked about my process and really just announced it. Like I would a launch essentially. Um, I put it out yeah. there into the world. And um, now I just make sure I regularly include it in like an email newsletter and, and I refer to it um, you know, when it makes sense. Um, I think at one point I had a few ads running on my podcast for it. Um, mm -hmm. But now there's um, something off my welcome sequence for it. So I have like a welcome okay. sequence around a launch copy map. And I talk about how you can either you know buy some of my templates or you can book me to like write a piece of your like like the, like the sales page which i say the sales page is the core if you have a sales page you can write everything else because it all stems from there really so i i really do education through there um i do have some referral partners and i'm still i'm still growing that i still would love more sales page like designer partners and um but i have i have some great um do have some great partners so we've done a little bit of like email swaps instagram lives um, the other way I have marketed, which has been big, is getting my clients um, helping me 
actually. So asking them if they'll do an Instagram live with me, um, asking for testimonials and like sharing those stories and sharing the experience of working with me. Um, and the more I find I share like sort of the process and little, even like an Instagram story, a little process of writing, um, a little tidbit they shared with me. And then like the final result, um, yeah. I find I always get inquiries after that. Nice. Um, yeah. and, and, and so then some of those clients, of course, will then refer them else, which is so lovely. Um, and the other thing I've done, I think we've talked about it um, once, once or twice before, but I also have a couple email sequences that I created. And so mm -hmm. what, I, what I do is when I have space in my calendar, I might, and I know it's coming up, like let's say I'm finishing one of my big launch packages or I'm midway through and I want to sort of fill up you know, my next, um, my calendar a little bit for the next few months, I will actually like hit, you know, send on this sequence and it'll go out. And I created two versions of it. Um, and so far I've, you know, it's only been about a year since I've been doing this. So I've used both versions um, and I can, I can definitely reuse them again. I might change the story a little bit around it, but um, those are ready to go in my pocket. So that when I see down the road, like the next quarter, okay, I have space coming up here. Let's go and like, you know, get some folks in to do VIP days. Yeah, which I I love anything that I can just hit a button. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like the ultimate like automation dream uh, and whatnot. So I love that you've thought through that process and been intentional about your calendar. Like it's like, okay, I'm not going to hit send on this when I'm in the middle of a launch package. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to hit send on it when I know that like this next month is when I want to book it, right? Don't shoot no. yourself in the foot, you know, with, with that stuff, be intentional. So I think mm -hmm. too, when people create too automated of stuff, then sometimes that can happen. And they're like, okay, I just, I'm going to put it on autopilot. But what you've done is really smart and strategic because it's like, no, I'm going to hit send when I'm, when it makes sense for me to hit send mm -hmm. from a calendar and energy standpoint. So that's and, like, and brilliant. for sure I've done that for energy too, because I have, I, I have found one of my habits that I have to like fight against would yeah. be to say yes. <laughs> like, Cause I do want to work with like someone. I'm like, this is so exciting. I totally want to do this with you. And I'm like, Oh, I can make it happen. And I'll start shoving things around on my calendar. But yeah. at the detriment of like my health, my family. And, yeah. and even I love, and I, and I have realized I like to be pretty singular in our project. Um, I really like to go in and focus and move faster like that. Um, I think I, I think I do my best work like that. So um, mm. it's a way for me to also honor that and realize that like that's difficult for me. So let's set up systems so that it's a bit easier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, the beauty of systems, obviously, why my business is <laughs> what it is. Uh, so you have multiple VIP days now. So yeah. talk to us about um, kind of again once you got sales page pal rocking and rolling. Then what was the, I guess, pivot point that you had of, okay, I want to create another VIP day. What is your other VIP day? Uh, and uh, talk to us about that. Right. So I have a secret menu VIP day. And what it is, is for people me. So either they've come through sales page pal, or they've gone through my signature offer, the big one, which is called launch worthy. And oftentimes they want to work with me on something else or like, okay, this was great what else can we do together? Or, um, you know, or, you know, when I'm giving them next steps to the end of the project, I'm like, okay, you might want to think about this, this, and this going further, like future. And I do that because one, I want to tell them, and that's part of like my strategy, right? And two, like it does help entice more work, you know, working together. Like here's how we can work together. Yeah. And so with that, I came up with, um, I call it like my um, CMO companion um, VIP day. And it is something they can buy like in a bulk of like three. So it would not be, it's not um, like a contract, like in terms of it's not like a recurring um, contract or something like that. We just call it like three VIP days. That's what they're buying. Or um, someone bought six before. Um, it's a VIP day. We meet um, on the morning of the call. We talk about what a project we want to cover for that month. So for some of my clients, we've put together, let's say um, a live webinar uh, like they wanted to do. So I did the landing page, the show up emails, the after emails, and I just did it all in one day. And okay. it's really easy for me to do once I've worked with someone because I already know their business, their voice, their messaging, and I can accomplish that in a day. We can go a lot faster. Um, so looking at sort of like what they want to get done in their business and where those gaps and opportunities are, they'll hire me for that. And I only do that again for people who I've worked with because 
um, I need to know, I need to be able to move fast in order for it to work. I need to already have their messaging and things down. Um, so that's yeah. my other one, my secret one. And then there's one I'm in development with and it's around uh, messaging. So what I have realized is that so many people, they don't have their messaging down and it really, in the end, they could probably write all of their own copy if they just had their messaging. If they talked to their customers, gathered those testimonials, did some research and mapped it out in a really easy to use way, way they'd actually have like, you know, all the dreams, the hesitation, the objections, they'd have it all there. And once you have that, like, as you know, Jordan, you can create content, you can like, do podcast episodes, you can write all the emails, um, but it feels really overwhelming to do. Um, and oftentimes I think people don't like to ask their clients for these things, but most of the time clients say yes, like that has been my experience totally. um, for, for almost all the clients I've worked with. Like when they ask for interviews, almost everyone's like, sure, I'd love to help you. Right. Like, yeah. and so um, I'm working on the, putting that together, VIP to get together, which is all around messaging. So they end up with a copy playbook where they'll do their customer, like the five stages of awareness from like unaware to most aware. We'll map through all the, um, like the thoughts that they're at, um, their pain points, like their hesitations or dreams and help them. It'll help them really figure out like their lead magnet through their launch event, through their offer, and they can make tweaks. And then I'll give them um, some gaps and opportunities for them to go and work on. So that's what I am in the midst of putting together. And I'm pretty excited about Yes. Once you get bit by the VIPA bug, it uh... <laughs> doesn't stop. <laughs> yeah, it does not stop. that is for sure. So to wrap up uh, this uh, chit chat, I want to ask you uh, the end question I ask everyone, which is uh, going back to pre VIP day, Sarah, uh, how would you, or what would be the biggest tip that you would give someone who was like, her, you slash you, um, who is contemplating VIP days, what is some advice that you would suggest for them to know if VIP days are the right next step for them? Mm, that's such a good question. I think I would say, do you have something that you want to, that the people come to you and they want to do, um, that is taking you, let's say a lot of time that actually could be compressed realistically. Like, mm -hmm. because I think we all have these offers that we're doing that probably don't need to take a week. Um, we maybe we add in extra calls and we do all these extra things. Um, but when we actually pull back, like what is that transformation or what do they really need from us if we strip away all the other things? So I would say like, mm -hmm. if you have something like that, you're prime for VIP. Um, if you, you know, also, also though, if you want to clear out some space in your calendar and like believe that it is possible to be able to do so and to be able to make, um, you know, multiple figure days, <laughs> basically yeah. like four figure days, um, absolutely. That in the end can add up to like, you know, five figure months. And, th and that's something that I have, you know, I think it took me a little while to think that's possible as well, because my signature package is like a five figure package, but it still takes three right. months. Right. But I'm right. like, so actually, but a VIP day, we could have that same amount in a month. Um, yeah. And yeah. is less energy and time consuming. Yeah. Um, so I think believing what's possible, um, seeing what your offer is about and how you could maybe refine it to just really hone in on what people need from you and without all this sort of extra and dangly bits and things that we tend to throw in because we feel like maybe we need to. Yeah. Oh, so true. I know there's so many, I remember when I had my monthly retainer packages and like, I remember like stuffing in like filler time because I knew that the client would most likely delay or it would take a while to get this mm -hmm. or whatever else. And so when you add all those like filler things up, it's like, okay, let's just like cut all that out. And like, yeah, I could probably sure. get this done in a much quicker way. For um, sure. So yeah, I agree. I, I find that too. Like, I think even um, with like the copy, I've cut down how many calls I do with the client because now I have, again, like with your program, I really got good at this was I like actually, you know, made myself a list of all the questions that I tend to ask and I really need to answer the emails. So I looked at the emails I write and I look at the questions I need to write those emails. Yep. Um, so now it's much more purposeful, which means I can move much more fast. I do not need to have as many calls and that's good for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> like, everybody is happy to have less calls in their calendar. <laughs> I know. Like, I feel like it's, I don't even know the last time I heard anyone be like, 
I would like more calls on my calendar. Like, I don't exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's not, not a thing. No. But. <laughs> it's more like when someone, when someone cancels, it's like, yay. I know, it's like, oh, I, I have free time. <laughs> so, we, we can do that. We can do that for folks by being more clear about our offers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so true. Give them the more uh, no call time back for sure. Uh, so this was so great, Sarah. How can people connect with you, find you, uh, and connect with you? Yeah, you can find me on my website, which is sarahvartanian.com. Um, I'm also on Instagram at the same place, Sarah Vartanian, or on my podcast, the Launch Playbook Podcast, which is everywhere you find podcasts. Yes, awesome, awesome. Yeah, we'll have all the links uh, in the comments so you can go and easily click and uh, connect with Sarah, say hi. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for being on the show. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Jordan. This is so much fun. Appreciate it. Yeah. Awesome. So I will see all of you watchers and listeners uh, next Tuesday. We'll have another, <clears throat> excuse me, VIP uh, day to showcase. Um, but in the meantime, uh, check us out on Instagram, um, fiddle around on YouTube, find more of these case studies. They're, they're pretty addictive. So y'all have a good rest of your day and see